remembered this. This had the impact, and it still does. By engaging with, with the public, instead of just assuming that there are a bunch of idiots who cannot possibly understand, she made the assumption that maybe they can understand, that they're intelligent, maybe they could. You know what? They did. People who you never expect to be interested in science took up this whole cause. So we need to be direct in the way that we educate the public. We need to be direct in how we get out there and use science to direct public policy rather than just simply influence it. That leads me then to my second part. And that is, well then, how are we going to deal with this complex scientific world? If it's getting so, so complex, so what if we, if we can influence it? How do we deal with it? With so many new ideas coming out all the time. So I want you to imagine for a moment the 19th century laboratory. Because one part of it's great and the other part not so. If you imagine it, you have this solitary scientist and they're sitting in the corner. Then there's all experiments going around, like curiosity cabinet just exploded. And so, let's pull out, first of all, that explosion of ideas that are going on, all the different experiments. Within biology, we should be able to move about and discuss with different scientists within the biological sciences. So if you're going into medical school, be able to discuss something with a plant biologist. If you're going into, if you're going into uh, in genetic research, be able to talk with somebody who's doing proteins, be able to talk amongst it. And not only that, be able to work in all, all of these fields. You may, you, may be, you may be an expert in one area, but being able to move around is a great idea because it really helps you in, in actually getting the science out there and dealing with all of that complexity. When I was down at the Medical University of South Carolina's second visit, I had a conversation with some MD, PhD graduate students. And we were talking about what was their actual point and what, what to get out of a graduate program. And we got into this conversation, and we basically came to the conclusion the idea was to learn how to do science. Not to learn how to do one specific area, but how to learn science in general, to learn what questions haven't been asked, to learn what questions and what, what issues you need to solve, those civilization goals, how to do that. And that's part of this, of being able to work within those individual fields. I remember from Dr. Ferkey's lecture, she mentioned Dr. Sidney Brenner, and this concept that, you know, he starts off with, with, with mRNA, establishes that, then he moves on into establishing Celians, the nematode worm, as a model or organism, but he works with other people, so it's the But the point is, is that he was able to move about within biology. So our ability as future scientists, as, as educators, to do that is going to be very important. And it's going to allow us to deal with all of those, all of that complexity. The second issue is, well, what about that solitary scientist in that room? We have to get rid of that. It has to be collaborative. You have to be able to work. We have to be able to work within teams, be able to work among other scientists. Because the issue is, it's not just that you're able to go out there and work within biology. That's one thing. What about dealing with mechanical engineering, biomedical engineering, and electrical engineering? All of these fields will allow us to solve those problems. We have to be able to collaborate. A few years ago, I, I was involved in a project, sorry, a project. It's a NASA Reduced Gravity Education Flight Program. The basic concept was you developed a project, and you presented it, and you had to be able to send it off to, to, to NASA about why would you want to use microgravity for this. So I would come up with an idea. It was about venous hardening, its effects on blood flow. That's fine, but how could I design all of the equipment? How could I get the right blood solutions? How could I come up with nuances in this? There were, the whole team consisted of mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, computer engineers, chemists. We were all working together toward this common goal. So whether it's working within biology itself or being able to look at other areas of science and collaborating and not just working as solitary units, that is how we're going to solve all, all of these, these great problems. <coughs> because if we're going to direct public policy, if we're going to do that, if we're going to build the 21st century, we can't be those who just simply wait for it to happen. We have to go out there and seize it. The first century BC Roman poet Virgil wrote in his Aeneid, Odentus Vatunus Yuvat, fortune favors the bold. Ms. Frizzle in the Bad Magic School Bus would, would say, you know, take chances, make mistakes, get the messy. We need to challenge ourselves to be bold, to take those chances so that we're able to build a science for the 21st century. Thank you.